Hello. In this lecture, we'll study exponential and logarithmic equations. So we'll review properties of exponential and logarithmic functions, but then we'll discuss strategies for solving equations involving these functions, beginning with exponential functions and moving on to logarithmic ones. Then we'll do a few examples of inequalities involving such functions. So now we know a lot of properties and identities of both exponential and logarithmic functions. Specifically, we have the following exponential identities. They are one-to-one -one functions, so if you have b to the x equals b to the y, then those exponents x and y must be equal. Similarly, if the logarithm of base b of x equals log base b of y, then the two inputs must be equal as well. There is a correspondence between logarithms and exponential equations. Log base b of x equals y is the same information as stating that x equals b to the y. The logarithm base b is the inverse function of exponentiation with base b. So log base b of b to the x and b to the log base b of x are both equal to x. And because they are inverse functions of one another and we know exponential identities, we get corresponding logarithmic identities. The log base b of xy is equal to the log base b of x plus the log base b of y. Log base b of x over y is log base b of x minus log base b of y. And log base b of x to the n is n times log base b of x. Note that we do not have an identity for the logarithm base b of x plus y. The properties and identities of these functions are helpful when we're attempting to solve equations involving them, which is reasonable. Now there's two general techniques we're going to introduce that can be applied to solving exponential equations. First, perhaps you can get the equation to look like b to the x equals b to the y with the same base on both sides. Then the two exponents x and y must be equal and you can continue solving. Alternately, you may get it to just look like b to the x equals some number, and then you can convert it into a logarithm. So for example, try to solve for x, e to the x squared times e to the minus 3 equals e to the x squared. Now we can get this to look like b to the x equals b to the y, where we have the same base on both sides. So we have e to the x squared times e to the minus 3 equals e to the x squared. On the left, we can call this e to the x squared minus 3, and on the right, we can call it e to the 2x. Now we have e to one thing equals e to another where they have the same base on both sides. Therefore, the exponents must be equal. x squared minus 3 is equal to 2x. Now we just have to solve this for x, but this is just a quadratic problem. We know how to do this. We move the 2x to the other side. This happens to be factorable. And if x minus 3 times x plus 1 is equal to 0, then x must equal 3 or perhaps x equals minus 1. So we found two values of x which solve the original equation. How about we try to solve for t? 3 to the t equals 100. So now we have something in the form a base to a power equals a constant. So we're going to convert it into a logarithm. What we're going to do is we're going to take a logarithm of both sides, and we can use any base we want, but generally we'll use the natural log. So here's where we start. 3 to the t equals 100. We take a natural logarithm of both sides, but now on the left we have the natural log of 3 to the t. So we can call that t times the natural log of 3. Now remember, natural log of 3 and natural log of 100 are just numbers. So you can divide both sides by natural log 3 and we're done. Another way to solve this, by the way, is we can convert the original exponential, 3 to the t equals 100, into a logarithm of base 3. Specifically, we would immediately solve that t is log base 3 of 100 simply by converting the original expression directly into a logarithm of base 3. But remember we have the change of base formula, so log base 3 of 100 is equal to the natural log of 100 divided by the natural log of 3. This is the same solution. Another example, let's try to solve for x. 6 times e to the 2x minus 1 minus 7 equals 40. So we're going to get e to the 2x minus 1 by itself. So we can add 7 to both sides. Great, but we also need to divide by 6. So e to the 2x minus 1 equals 47 sixths. Now we need to try to solve this for x. We have 1 base to a power equals a constant, so we can take a natural log. So the natural log of e to the 2x minus 1 equals the natural log of 47 over 6. Now we can simply cancel out the natural log of an exponentiation in base e to get 2x minus 1 equals the natural log of 47 sixths. And solving this for x is a straightforward prospect. We just need to add 1 and divide by 2.
Let's try to solve both of these for x. 2 to the 5th to the x power equals 2 to the x minus 4. Alternately, 4 to the 2x plus 3 plus 11 equals 100. So first, let's use properties of exponents, and we get that 2 to the 5x equals 2 to the x minus 4. Since we have the same base on both sides and nothing else going on other than exponentiation, we have 2 to the 5x equals 2 to the x minus 4. Since exponential functions are 1 to 1, we get that 5x must equal x minus 4. This is easy to solve for x. x will equal minus 1. On the other side, we have 4 to the 2x plus 3 plus 11 equals 100. So we'll subtract 11 from both sides. And since we now have an exponential equals a constant, we will simply convert it to a logarithmic expression. We're going to take the natural log of both sides. That exponent of 2x plus 3 comes out as a factor. So now we have 2x plus 3 times natural log 4 equals natural log 89. We're going to divide both sides by natural log 4. Then we can subtract 3 and divide by 2 to complete solving for x. Another example, let's solve 2 times 3 to the x equals 4 times 5 to the 6x. Now neither strategy that we've introduced directly applies so far. But we can still solve this by using logarithms. So take a natural log of both sides. Then use properties of logarithms to break everything down. So we have 2 times 3 to the x equals 4 times 5 to the 6x. So if we take a natural log of both sides, because the two sides are equal, their natural logs will be as well. Now on the left, since we were taking the natural log of 2 times 3 to the x, that can be broken apart as natural log 2 plus natural log 3 to the x. And on the other side, we will similarly get natural log 4 plus natural log 5 to the 6x. The x in the exponent of natural log 3 to the x and the 6x in the exponent of natural log of 5 to the 6x can be brought out as factors. But now observe, we just have a linear equation. Log 2, log 3, log 4, log 5, these are just constants. So on the left, we have a number plus x times a number. And on the right, we have a number plus 6x times a number. This is a linear equation in x. So we're going to gather all of our x's together and all of our constants together and solve for x. So let's move everything with x's to the left and everything that doesn't have x's to the right. We can factor an x out of that expression on the left and then divide by natural log 3 minus 6 times natural log 5. And we've solved for x. Now there's also strategies to solve logarithmic equations. One thing you can do is get the equation to look like log base b of one expression equals log base b of another. Then since logarithms are one to one, those two expressions must be equal. Alternately, if you can get it to look like the logarithm of something equals a fixed constant, then you can convert to an exponential expression to continue solving. Now remember that the domain of a logarithm is not all real numbers. You cannot take the logarithm of zero or of a negative number. Therefore, any answers you generate using the above techniques need to be double checked that they are in the domain of the original expression. This is not something that came up with exponential functions because the domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. So for example, try to solve for x, the natural log of x minus five plus the natural log of x plus one equals the natural log of seven x minus 33. Now on the left, we can combine terms to get the natural log of x minus five times x plus one. Now we have the natural log of one thing equals the natural log of another. Therefore, those two things are equal. We can expand on the left, and collect everything to one side. Now I have a quadratic which is equal to zero. It happens to be factorable. You could always just use the quadratic formula, but it factors as x minus four times x minus seven must equal zero. Therefore, either x equals four or perhaps x equals seven. However, we do need to check these values of x to make sure they're in the domain of the original expression. So we solved that perhaps x equals four and x equals seven could be solutions to the original equation. So let's check if they solve all of the steps involved. They definitely solve the quadratic we generated, that x minus 5 times x plus 1 will equal 7x minus 33. But the step right before that had logarithms in it, and before that it had many different logarithms in it. So let's check everything here. In the original expression, for x equals 4, you will end up with the natural log of 4 minus 5 plus the natural log of 4 plus 1. But the natural log of negative 1 is not defined. Negative 1 is not in the domain of logarithmic functions. Therefore, x equals 4 is not actually a solution to the original equation. When we went 
from this line to this line, we used the identity that log of a plus log of b equals log of a times b. And that's true provided that every term actually exists. And for x equals 4, this term here does not actually exist. What about x equals 7? Here we're going to get the natural log of 7 minus 5 plus the natural log of 7 plus 1. That's just going to be natural log 2 plus natural log 8. But remember, here we have log a plus log b, where everything is defined. So that is log a times b, so the natural log of 16. And on the right-hand side, you'll directly end up with the natural log of 16. So both sides genuinely evaluate to the same thing here. Therefore, x equals 7 is actually a solution, and it's the only solution to the original equation. Another example, let's try to solve for t. The logarithm base 4 of 5t plus 7 is equal to 3. Well, now we just have a logarithm equal to a constant, so we'll convert to an exponential. And we end up with 5t plus 7 equals 4 cubed. 4 cubed is just 64. So 5t is equal to 57 by subtracting 7 from both sides. Divide by 5, and you directly get that t is equal to 57 over 5. Let's check that this solution is really in the domain of the original expression. If we go ahead and plug 57 over 5 into the expression, we just end up with the logarithm base 4 of 64, which is exactly equal to 3. Remember that 64 is 4 cubed, so we have log base 4 of 4 cubed. That's just going to be 3. Therefore, the value of t we found, 57 over 5, is actually a solution, and it is the only solution, to the original equation. Another example, try to solve for x. 2 times the log base 5 of x equals the log base 5 of 9. So what we're going to do is try to get this to look like one logarithm equals another. So let's just bring that factor of 2 inside the logarithm to get log base 5 of x squared equals log base 5 of 9. Now we have one log base 5 equals another log base 5. So the two inputs must be the same because logarithms are 1 to 1. Now for x squared equals 9, x could be plus or minus 3. But only x equals 3 is a solution. In the original expression, you have log base 5 of x. And for x equals minus 3, you cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. Again, this expression here, 2 log base 5x equals log base 5 of x squared, provided that both things exist. And when x is negative, this term doesn't even exist, while this one does. Another example, solve for x. Natural log x plus natural log x minus 3 equals 4. So we can write this as one logarithm equals a constant by combining the logarithms on the left. Natural log of x times x minus 3 equals 4. Now we have a logarithm equals a number. So we can express this as an exponential. x times x minus 3 equals e to the fourth. In other words, by distributing on the left and moving the e to the fourth over, x squared minus 3x minus e to the fourth equals 0. But this is just a quadratic expression. e to the fourth is just some number. So we have variable squared minus 3 times variable minus e to the fourth equals 0. So plug it into the quadratic formula. You'll end up with x is 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus e to the fourth, all divided by 2 times 1. This simplifies a little bit. And we get two possible answers, 9.04 or negative 6.04, rounded off, of course. However, in the original expression, negative 6.04 will be a problem. If x is negative, log x doesn't exist. And if x is negative 6.04, this would be negative 9.04, which definitely doesn't exist either. However, for x equals 9 point something, this exists, but so will this. You'll end up with the natural log of 6.04, which is a totally fine thing to have. So of the two solutions we found via the quadratic formula, only one of them is actually in the domain of the original expression. So only x equals 9.04, roughly, is actually a solution. Now when solving inequalities involving exponential or logarithmic functions, we can follow the same strategies for solving them. So for equations, we had a few techniques, and we're just going to use them to solve inequalities as well. Keep the following details in mind, however, when working with logarithmic or exponential inequalities. The solution will usually be an interval or perhaps a union of different intervals. And for a logarithmic inequality, remember that there is a domain restriction that you need to be careful about and you need to remember. In other words, once you find a solution to your inequality in terms of the variable, usually x, you need to double check that you actually are in the domain of the logarithmic functions that were on the original expression. 
For example, solve the inequality 2 to the minus x plus 4 is less than 2 to the 3x minus 8. So we're going to follow a lot of steps that will seem familiar here. So we go ahead and say we want to solve 2 to the minus x plus 4 is less than 2 to the 3x minus 8, but observe that both sides are powers of the same base 2. Now the function 2 to the something is an increasing function. In other words, larger outputs of the function must correspond to larger inputs. So in our first line, here we have a smaller output 2 to the minus x plus 4 that is smaller than this output 2 to the 3x minus 8. So because exponential functions whose base is larger than 1 are increasing, a smaller output must correspond to a smaller input. So the exponent minus x plus 4 must be smaller than the exponent 3x minus 8. And now we can solve this for x. We directly get x, it must be bigger than 3. Note that we did end up dividing by negative 4, and therefore we did have to reverse the inequality. So the solution is all x is bigger than 3. And because we began with exponential expressions, there's no domain restriction to worry about. Another example, let's try to solve the inequality. 2 thirds times the natural log of 2x plus 1 is less than or equal to 10. So we're going to use similar steps as if we were solving an equality. So begin with the original expression. The first thing we're going to want to do is multiply both sides by 3 halves so that we just have a logarithm on one side and a constant on the other. Now imagine taking the smaller number on the left and the bigger number on the right and plugging them into the function e to the something. So because our left side is smaller than the right and e to the x is an increasing function, e to a smaller number will be less than or equal to e to a bigger number. But e to the natural log of something is just that thing. So we took a smaller and a bigger number, plugged them into the function e to the something. e to a smaller exponent, well e to the log of 2x plus 1 is just 2x plus 1, will be less than or equal to e to a larger exponent, e to the 15th. And now we can solve this for x. x must be less than or equal to e to the 15th minus 1 over 2. But we're not done yet. It's not actually true that every x less than or equal to e to the 15 minus 1 over 2 will be a solution to the original inequality. For example, if you pick x equals minus 1, that's definitely less than e to the 15 minus 1 over 2. e to the 15 is an enormous number, so e to the 15 minus 1 over 2 is still a very large number. x equals minus 1 is definitely less than that, but it's not actually a solution to the original expression, because if you plug x equals 1 into the original expression, you'll end up with a net natural log of a negative number, which is not defined. So to find the actual correct solution, we need to account for the fact that the original expression has a logarithm and there is therefore a domain restriction. So what is being plugged into the natural log function in the original expression, 2x plus 1, that must be positive because you can only take logs of positive numbers. Solving this gives us that x must be bigger than minus 1 half. So to solve the inequality, x must be less than or equal to e to the 15th minus 1 over 2. But to even be a legitimate x to plug into the expression, x must be bigger than minus 1 half. So the domain of the expression is everything bigger than minus 1 half. So here are the two things we found. Our inequality gave us that x should be less than or equal to one number, whereas our domain restriction gave us that x must be bigger than another. So we have two bits of information here. Any x in the solution set has to be less than or equal to e to the 15th minus 1 over 2. But any x in the solution set also has to be bigger than minus 1 half. Therefore, both have to be true. We have to be in the interval from minus infinity to e to the 15th minus 1 over 2 inclusive, but also in the interval from minus 1 half exclusive to infinity. So to be in both intervals, you have to be in the intersection. And remember, e to the 15th is a very large number. So this first interval goes from minus infinity to a large positive number. The second interval goes from minus 1 half off to infinity. So what's the intersection of both of these intervals going to be? The interval from minus 1 half to e to the 15th minus 1 over 2. x's in this interval will be less than e to the 15th minus 1 over 2, which was a requirement for our inequality and they will also be bigger than minus one half, which is a requirement to be in the domain. So we don't include minus one half because of this domain restriction. And because our original inequality included the possibility of equality, we go ahead and have a square bracket here rather than an open parenthesis.